Chapter 5 of the Book of Boba Fett is out, and it's a big one. Not in terms of action or even moving Boba Fett's story along that we can see, but it gives us a lot of insight into things like the Darksaber, the Purge of Mandalore, known as the Night of a Thousand Tears, the reason Bo-Katan Kreese failed as a leader, and where the armor and Paz Vizsla stood during the Purge and Bo-Katan's reign. This all serves the story of the Mandalorian very well, if you take it at face value. But there is also more to it than that. There were two more things that could have been missed if you weren't noticing its subtlety. And the subtle hint could be a huge clue to the future of Boba Fett himself. The armorer tells Din Djarin the songs of Eon's past foretold of the Mythosaur rising up to herald a new age of Mandalore. Sadly, it only exists in Legends. We all know the mighty Mythosaur has been extinct for some time. The last to ride them were the Taong, an ancient race of Mandalorians that came before the mostly human Mandalorians that we know. The second quote I'll talk about is also from the armor when talking about Bo-Katan Kreese and the Darksaber. Had our sect not been posted on the moon of Concordia, we would have not survived the Great Purge. Then it goes into a Terminator-style flashback where we see the Empire decimate Mandalore. The domed city of Sundari can be seen being destroyed. So the second quote is the first I'll talk about, and I'll try to get through that one quickly to get to the big one. Yeah, I changed my mind, so shoot me, whatever. So if you've seen the Clone Wars, you know the moon of Concordia is an important place for the members of Death Watch. This is views. Master Kenobi, Mandalore's violent past is behind us. All of our warriors were exiled to our moon, Concordia. It's where they were banished to by the pacifist government. That is, until Maul took over Death Watch by killing Pre Vizsla and taking the Darksaber as his right to rule. At this time, Bo-Katan Kreese left Death Watch, turning her back on so many of her former friends and colleagues, fellow terrorists. And one of those was Rook Cast. Now, I know I've made a couple videos about the fate of Rook Cast and where I believe she ended up, but to recap, she ended up wearing a certain gold helmet with small horns. Small horns that indicate a former allegiance to a certain fallen Sith, Darth Maul. Or just Maul. The tie-ins between the armor and Rook cast are just too convenient. It's also important to note that the armor seems bitter towards Bo-Katan and blames her for the loss of Mandalore. If the legends are true, and we will get more into that word in a little bit then it is Bo-Katan's fault for losing Mandalore. That is, the legend of the Darksaber. That it is to be wielded by Creed through victory in combat from the previous wielder. But we all know the Darksaber was gifted to Bo-Katan by Sabine Wren. I understand why the Saber came to me. It came to me so I could pass it to you. I accept this sword for my sister. If the rumors are true, and there will be a Bo-Katan series, and I hope there is, then this sets up a huge backstory for her character and that of Rook Cast, the armorer. But this is one I've been theorizing on for a while. Now let's get back to the first quote I mentioned, also from the armorer. The songs of Eon's past foretold of the Mythosaur rising up to herald a new the songs of Eon's past foretold of the Mythosaur rising up to herald a new age of Mandalore. Sadly, it only exists in Legends. Okay, let's break this little bit down. It's important to note what she's doing at the very moment she speaks this line and the actual words used. In literature, the rhetoric used is just as important as the message being conveyed on the surface. The outward, obvious message being, the Mythosaur will rise again to help usher a renaissance of Mandalore. The Mythosaur being a large dinosaur or dragon-like creature that was ridden by the ancient Mandalorians, until the mostly human Mandalorians were all that was left and killed the Mythosaur to extinction. But the legend the armor tells about says there should be at least one. And there is one, but there is only one, and it's on Tatooine. Look at what the armor is doing when she's talking about the legend. And don't worry, I'll get into her words in just a bit. But what she's doing is she's opening a tool cabinet. But what's on the cabinet in front of her face? Painted in a subdued red. The Mythosaur skull. Now, 
This could tie into her beliefs that the mythosaur is legendary and part of their society and religion. It's an icon. Or, let's examine the symbol, rather than the creature. If we go back to The Mandalorian Season 1, we see the mythosaur skull above the door to the armor's work area. Now, in Chapter 5 of the Book of Boba Fett, we see the symbol above a door again that leads to their new hideaway. Lastly, we see the symbol one more time on the tool cabinet, but this one is different than the ones we have seen in The Mandalorian before. This one is more familiar. It's true that The Mandalorians use the Mythosaur symbol as a symbol of power and unity, but as we've seen, each in live action has been different, even in the comics. Even in the old Jango Fett comics, the Mythosaur looked different, or at least the symbol of it. But this one on the tool cabinet is conveniently placed there as she's talking about the mythosaur rising. This is the same brand mythosaur skull that Boba Fett wears. We can sit and debate all day about why she would have that emblem on her tool chest if only Boba Fett wore it. But this version of the mythosaur skull symbol isn't placed there for her to see. It's placed there for us to see. A subtle hint that Boba Fett is going to rise and become the Mandalore to usher a new dawn for the Mandalorian people. I said I would get back to her words. The word legend appears in Star Wars when something in the old expanded universe is about to be made canon again. There's always a bit of truth in legends. Again, Ahsoka Tano said it in Rebels. There's always a bit of truth in legends. She said that just before the reintroduction of Grand Admiral Thrawn into the new canon from Legends. In Legends, which is what Lucasfilm has deemed old print media from before the Disney era, Boba Fett became the Mandalore to usher in a new era for the Mandalorians. Look at her words again. The songs of eons past foretold of the mythosaur rising up to herald a new age of Mandalore. Who is rising up as a leader? Boba Fett. I know everyone wants Din Djarin to be that Mandalore, but that isn't going to be the case. Right now, Boba Fett is charging himself up, becoming a leader of a crime syndicate, to later on take the mantle. And if we look at the Darksaber as the icon of leadership, Din Djarin didn't even want it. He handed it off to Paz Vizsla and, like it was no big deal, instead of walking it over to the armorer himself. He also had a hard time using it. It got heavier and harder to wield. It's going to continue being a problem for him. Remember, when I said the Darksaber had passed down from generation to generation within Clan Vizsla? This lightsaber was stolen from your Jedi Temple by my ancestor, Fall of the Old Republic. Since then, many Jedi have died upon its blade. I said that a few videos ago or a while back, but it's the truth. It's even been said in the Clone Wars. Using the word legend again, in the former comics, Jango Fett beat Tor Vizsla in single combat, making Jango Fett the rightful owner of the Darksaber. However, it was not even created by Lucasfilm at that time yet, and therefore not explained. If they take Legends material from those comics and make it canon, because Jango Fett wasn't wielding the Darksaber when he was killed, it didn't get passed to Mace Windu either. In fact, it was sitting with Clan Vizsla the whole time, unrightfully. Cursing their society, ending in Pre Vizsla's death, then cursing Maul's reign when he wasn't the rightful owner of it either, then Bo-Katan, Moff Gideon, but who was the rightful owner? As far as the Darksaber knew, it was Jango Fett, and there is one perfect DNA clone of Jango, Boba Fett. Now I understand why the Saber came to me. Now I understand why the Saber came to me. And if I'm right, 
This episode of the Book of Boba Fett had everything to do with Boba Fett, even though we hadn't seen him, and very little to do with Din Djarin. That's why it wasn't the first episode of The Mandalorian Season 3, but the fifth episode of the Book of Boba Fett, which is supposed to wrap up in two more episodes. I know this is a long explanation as to my theory that Boba Fett will lead the Mandalorians to victory and prosperity, and I've been saying it for a long time, and when the war is over on Tatooine and Boba Fett is victorious... Tatooine will be the new home of the Mandalorians. But what do you think? Is this possible? The more we see from the two series, the more I see as it's only a matter of time before it happens. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you're new here, go on and hit the subscribe button and give the video a like to show your love for what I do here. This is Gerald with Star Wars Fanatic signing off and wishing you all good health and happiness. Thank you for watching and remember, this is the way. The only way.